So we look at this uh, arrow. <coughs> Uh, if we think back in the 70s, 60s and 70s, most of the uh, health information campaigns, they were, they were this type. They were educational campaigns uh, that are information based. So you're giving people a message about health or about disease or about some behavior that is incorrect. And you write, usually it's been written material, posters, pamphlets, uh, flyers, uh, uh, things that are posted on walls of houses and so on, and you write what is, what is the correct way. So here are some uh, examples of uh, these educational materials, uh, hygiene promotion materials. Uh, these approaches, these purely information-based approaches are still very, very uh, common in many places. So you see tons of materials being developed, uh, written materials like these, uh, um, in hundreds and thousands and they're uh, posted on walls all over the place. What is important to know about <coughs> these is that they can raise some awareness. People can get some more knowledge, but it doesn't change behaviors if it stands alone. Mm -hmm. Right? People will get more uh, informed about something, but not necessarily change <coughs> behaviors. So if you're planning some educational materials, you have to follow up with something else. So then uh, after the 70s, uh, a lot of people realized that, OK, this, we need to develop this. And the next kind of school of thought that came up was these community-based approaches that were far more participatory than before. Before, it was more, much more indirect and passive knowledge uh, delivering. And now uh, all these kinds of community-based approaches were designed that involve people to some degree in, in a, in a in changing some health behaviors or conditions. And one of the most famous ones is the FAST, uh, participatory hygiene and sanitation. Is it technologies or strategies? Or I can't remember the T. But it's a, it's a kind of a, it's a systematic approach to give people some knowledge and design some interventions. I'll get back to it. Uh, and another famous one is the CLTS, the community-led total sanitation. It's a very uh, debated approach to sanitation promotion. We'll also get back to that. <coughs> and, and this turned out to actually be much, much more effective than this, involving people in the processes so they develop ownership. And now somebody also mentioned that. But uh, uh, more recently, in the 90s, I think it was, uh, some people discovered that looked at who are really, really, really effective at changing people's behaviors, who are really good at it. And they found out that in the commercial sector, in the industry, they are really good at designing things that can make people buy whatever, right? They're really good at convincing people to invest in something. So these new approaches called social marketing strategies were developed that are drawing heavily on principles from, uh, the, from the commercial uh, area. Uh, and they are uh, using all these uh, marketing uh, analy analysis to, to understand people's behaviors. Uh, what is really new about these approaches is that there's usually no subsidies connected to it. It's usually actually about convincing people to buy something. So it's not supply driven. It's not about giving people something. It's about creating a demand for something instead. So actually convincing people to want something that increases their or improves their health. <coughs> um, what is also new about this type of hygiene promotion is that it's no longer only uh, focused on convincing people that it's good for their health. They are now beginning to use all these social and cultural motivators that we have talked about in the first session. They really understand that this is what is changing behavior. It's not talking about it. This is a major change in how we uh, promote uh, health and hygiene today. Now, the latest development uh, is all kinds of approaches that are mixing all kinds of things from these and other things. For example, edutainment. You can see the word, what it consists of. So it's a, an educational approach that uses entertaining components. So it's, for example, developing a, a TV series that has an educational content. Uh, so, in, for example, in Brazil, there's um, 
there's an immensely popular TV series called uh, no, I skipped my mind. Well, whatever. It's a TV series, and it has all kinds of health uh, and, and social uh, contents. It's about domestic violence. It's about HIV AIDS. It's about using condoms. They can put whatever in it, and it's so popular. It's seen by millions of people every day. Uh, so they can communicate about health very effectively through uh, entertaining platforms. BCC, Behavior Change Communication, is uh, an approach where you use uh, communication very strategically. You analyze very carefully what people think and what they know, and you create a, a, beha a campaign that draws on different motivators. Okay, these are the four main schools uh, within health education and hygiene promotion. And there are other trends as well uh, that you might come across that don't look like this. For example, uh, setting specific approaches, for example, school hygiene campaigns that takes uh, that uses the school as the setting right and then it draws on principles for these four i'm now going to show you one example from each and we're going to analyze it together what the designers of these campaigns thought okay so uh, you saw the educational material already it's stuff like this <coughs> you've seen tons of it so the more participatory process, I'm going to show you a video uh, from the community-led total sanitation campaign. Uh, and then we're going to talk about what, what motivational or behavioral drivers do they use here to communicate or to convince people to use uh, toilets. <coughs> 